Fine then. Um, so I'll be taking uh, this time analog electronic circuits. So that's our uh, uh, course name. Analog electronic circuits. And uh, code is, as you have already noticed, it is 80EE. Uh, 34. All right. So today I will not jump into uh, the course. Okay. So first, uh, uh, let us, you know, discuss about the uh, prerequisites or, you know, um, the requirements in order to take uh, this particular course. Okay. So I would say prerequisites. Prerequisites. Okay. Now, analog electronic circuits, right? So what do you mean by this uh, analog uh, term? And what do you mean by electronic term? And what is the meaning of this uh, circuit term? So we know circuit, right? Circuit is nothing but uh, interconnection of elements, we say, right? And uh, when you say interconnection of uh, elements, elements could be um, passive or active, right? So your elements could be passive or active. Right. So in basic electricals, we have already um, seen um, the uh, type of passive elements and uh, active elements. So active elements are the elements which possess um, the energy on their own. On the other hand, passive elements uh, uh, do not uh, possess energy on their own. Right. Fine. Now, uh, in case of uh, electronic circuits, um, we will be dealing with uh, electronic devices. Okay, so electronic devices. Electronic devices. Okay, having said that, I think I have addressed uh, uh, the two points. Circuits, interconnection of various elements um, comprising of passive and active elements. And if a circuit is comprising of electronic elements, then it is called as electronic circuit. All right. Now, when you say electronic elements or electronic devices, okay, um, is it a new topic to you or have you, um, uh, you know, come across um, the electronic circuits in the uh, recent past? Uh, you have studied about electronics right from your, uh, um, say, um, I think from eighth standard onwards, right? Um, you have studied about a uh, uh, few, uh, what do you say, concepts related to uh, the current, right? And in your 11th and 12th, uh, uh, probably you have had uh, a better exposure to electronics, correct? So you have uh, had uh, studied about um, the electronic uh, theory regarding the atomic structure, regarding the um, electronic charge, um, and then classification of, you know, elements on the basis of conduction, right? That is conductors, insulators, um, and then semiconductors, et cetera, et cetera. So when you say electronic devices, what I meant is the semiconductor devices. Semiconductor devices. Okay. Now, one question I want to pose here. Um, when you have, let's say, uh, the controlled devices such as the resistor, why do you need this uh, semiconductor devices? Why can't you make a circuit um, using, uh, um, what do you say, the controlled devices such as resistors? Why we have to go for, uh, let's say, somewhat complicated devices such as electronic devices? Can anyone tell me? Why do we need electronic devices? Why do we need electronic devices? Why not a uh, straightforward conductor? See, what happens is that conductor, if you take an example of, let's say, copper conductor, okay. Um, this copper conductor, if you connect uh, a battery or if you connect an energy source across the conductor, what happens? The current uh, almost, uh, you know, immediately starts to flow. Okay. 
and there is no way that you will be able to control the current provided you know you fiddle around with the conductor resistance okay on the other hand if you you know require a greater control on the flow of current um, instead of conductor probably you can go for a semiconductor device okay unlike conductor semiconductor device behaves differently correct so your conductor can you know um uh, what do you say um allow the passage of electricity um let's say for positive half cycle of the input as well as for the negative half cycle of the input on the other hand using um semiconductor devices you know you will be able to allow the flow of current only for a particular uh, half cycle and you can also you know dictate the terms there even for positive half cycle what should be the uh, duration what should be the on period and what should be the off period so by doing that you know you will get a greater uh, controlling action so that greater controlling action you know uh, basically uh, uh, drives uh, uh, you can say uh, the highly sophisticated uh, um, uh, devices that you uh, come across in your day to day life um, the device could be your metro train okay wherein you know to control the motor you don't give a continuous electricity you give a kind of uh, um, pulsed electricity so whenever you need this uh, pulsed electricity okay pulsed electricity as in pulsed electricity as in on off pulses pulses okay so if you want to turn on the motor you give an on pulse if you want to turn off the motor you give an off pulse and if you want uh, let's say a kind of uh, smooth variation in speed what you can do is you can vary the duration time duration you can vary the duration okay so that will be the um, according to uh, my um, what do you say um, knowledge uh, could be the highly sophisticated example and uh, you can also see um, the application of electronics uh, um, in motion uh, uh, activated lights etc etc okay so whenever you need a control over electricity you have to go for um, semiconductor devices okay so that's the reason um, you are um uh, what you say uh, the semiconductor devices uh, uh, pictures in in case of uh, controlling the electricity okay now um yeah so i was talking about this uh, prerequisite right now in the previous semester have you studied about um something about the electronics in the previous semester have you studied about um something about electronics any course you have taken up in electronics basic electronics you have taken up so basic electronics right so in your probably first or second sem first sem right Or second sem. Sir, yes. Or second. First sem, sir. First sem. First sem, sir. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. So basic electronics, right? So basic electronics, um, basically, uh, you can say that laid foundation for your electronics uh, knowledge. Okay. So this basic electronics basically is the prerequisite course for analog electronics circuits. In short, I would say AEC. and uh, you are currently studying a course which is called as digital system design right so fundamentals of digital system desi design you have um, already studied in uh, basic electronics and the third course i would say power electronics p okay so this you are going to study in third sem this is again you know is uh, taught in third sem and this you are going to study in fifth uh, uh, semester okay so this particular course basic electronics you know uh, it helps in understanding um, the higher semester courses okay now digital system design i'm not going to talk about because you are already studying this course okay so i will cut it from the list 
and uh, AEC and power electronics. This is analog electronic circuits and this is power electronic circuits. Okay, both are analog in nature. Okay, so both AEC and power electronics are analog in nature. In a sense, uh, uh, it uh, the circuit operates for a time varying signal. Time varying signal. All right. Um, in low, I mean, in AEC. Okay, so AEC is meant for um, low power operation. Low power operation. When I say low power operation. Um, I uh, want to mention a few of the things. Uh, the current, let's say this is the RMS value of current. In analog electronic circuits, okay, eventually you will see whenever you calculate uh, um, the various currents, uh, it could be diode current or it could be the transistor currents, or in fact, even uh, it could be the circuit current. You would see that um, the current always um, varies in the range of few milliamps to okay i would say um, micro to milli okay okay so basically it is micro to milli the current ranges from micro ampere to milliamp okay so this is in ac on the other hand in power electronics what happens is that the current, okay, the current normally varies um, from um, few amperes to several kilos of amperes. So that is the uh, major difference. Okay. So once if I introduce um, the current, um, probably now you will be able to appreciate the low power operation and high power operation, right? Power is nothing but multiplication of um, voltage and uh, current, right? So when you multiply, um, you know, this uh, enormous current with the voltage, so you can um, gauge the power level. So it will be in a uh, uh, few kilowatts to few megawatts, kilowatts to megawatts, your power electronic circuits, okay? On the other hand, if you look at AEC, um, your current is very in the range of micro to milliamperes. Hence, the power level is usually will be few millivolts. That's all. So that is one of the uh, major difference between your analog electronic circuits and power electronic circuits. Okay. So you would you will uh, see it when you come to uh, fifth semester. Okay. There are some repetition circuits. Repetition circuits in the sense. Um, you can have a rectifier circuit in AEC, okay, and you can also have a rectifier circuit in power electronics, okay. So, just in order to give you an example, I have quoted this uh, example. All right. Now, example for low power rectifier circuit, um, you can say you are say mobile phone, mobile phone, okay. Example. Rectifier circuit, which is used in mobile phone, wherein the power, okay, it, yeah, of course, uh, you know, the modern chargers can go up to uh, 60 watt. In, in fact, uh, the new mobile uh, chargers are uh, rated at 60 watt till 100 watts also. Okay, nevertheless, you know, the popular mobile chargers are uh, usually rated at 10 watt to 20 watt. I'm not talking about the um, exceptional uh, uh, mobile chargers uh, uh, produced by. Uh, one plus or whatever right in my companies okay they are uh, uh, rated at 100 watts also okay on the other hand if i uh, uh, look at uh, the power electronic side uh, the few rectifiers which are used in um, dc drives okay dc dc motor right so dc motor requires electricity so in order to get dc electricity you have to use a rectifier circuit um, so such rectifier circuits, okay, can be rated at uh, some kilowatt and in fact even megawatt also, okay. So that is the uh, clear cut uh, difference of um, low power rectifier and high power rectifier, okay. So this is the major classification difference of uh, AEC and power electronics. The AEC is, fix it in your mind, it is low power electronics. Power electronics is high power electronics. Okay. All right.
So that's about uh, the rectifier. Okay. Now, what I want to share with you is that the syllabus of basic electronics. All right. Uh, does it look familiar? This is the syllabus of basic electronics, which you have uh, already gone through. Right? Basic electronics. So what do we have in first module? Um, you have uh, semiconductor diodes and applications, right? PN junction diode, equivalent circuit of diode, Zener diode, etc., etc. Okay. Now, when you look at the AEC syllabus, okay, which I am going to present to you shortly, in the AEC syllabus, um, the syllabus starts from application. Okay. So we have circuits called clippers and clampers. Okay. So clippers and clampers uh, circuits they work on diodes. Now, in order to understand the working of clippers and clampers, you must know the working of diode. So working of diode, I may not be able to uh, teach you explicitly in analog electronic circuits. That's because, um, I mean, it is expected that you have understood the operation of uh, diode um, in uh, basic electronics course, because um, the syllabus clearly mentions that um, the PN junction diode and the equivalent circuit of a diode, etc., etc. Okay. Now, let's say if you have any doubts about the working, because um, we tend to uh, forget the contents over a period of time, right? So you can go back and you can quickly uh, brush up. Okay. Now, um, that's in module one. Okay. So in module one, I will collect the contents. Okay. Uh, what you have to do is you have to go back and you have to um, read about the diode uh, basics. Diode basic basics in the sense um, the forward biasing, the reverse biasing, um, and then the concept of barrier potential, etc., etc. Okay, fine. So that's about module one. Okay, module two talks about FET and SERs. Okay, SER is silicon controlled rectifier. So you are going to study more of your uh, silicon control rectifier in power electronics. All right. So SCR is reserved in power electronics because SCR is a high power uh, handling uh, device. Okay. Okay. Of course, FETs. FETs can be classified into two types, low power FETs and high power FETs. And that's the reason uh, the FETs we are going to study in uh, AC as well. Okay. However, um, the construction remains the same. Now, if you look at a module two syllabus, um, it's given that construction and operation of FET. All right. So construction is being already dealt with in basic electronics, so as the operation. So when I handle um, the FET uh, module, um, you know, I at least expect uh, that uh, you have, uh, uh, you know, uh, gone through with the uh, content of the construction and uh, you know, operation of FAT because it is already been uh, uh, introduced in your curriculum. So it is your duty to uh, go back and, you know, uh, read the basics of your FATs. All right. And uh, above FATs, we have the modeling part and also we have uh, the, uh, what do you say, the calculation of some important parameters of FAT. So uh, modeling part and the calculation of parameters will be taken care in analog electronics course. Okay, so now you are uh, uh, probably getting uh, the vague idea of prerequisite courses. So prerequisite courses, uh, you know, enable you to understand um, the higher semester core courses. All right, fine. So that's about module two. Module three. I'm not going to talk about it because module three um, will be dealt in detail uh, in a course called linear integrated circuits. So that linear integrated circuits course, um, you're going to uh, study in fourth semester. So module three, I'm going to just uh, uh, avoid.
avoid looking at it. Okay. Module four, yeah, BJT applications, feedback amplifiers, oscillators, very very important. Okay. So in fact, uh, you can say that uh, two modules in AEC are based on uh, module four of basic electronics. Okay. So you can understand now uh, the importance of uh, knowing the fundamentals of um, BJT applications and uh, feedback amplifiers and oscillators. Okay. So module four, module five for AC, I don't have to worry about because module five is required for your digital system design. Okay. So what I have done, so what we have done till now, we have just gone back and uh, gone back in time and looked at, you can say the syllabus of basic electronics. Okay. So, homework, don't worry, it's not about assignment, it's a qualitative homework, okay, I'm not going to ask you to, you know, show uh, five pages of uh, assignment or something like that. So, these are the topics which I'm going to write it and you are supposed to, you know, go back and get prepared and I will ask something known as pre-course survey pre-course survey okay what do you mean by pre-course survey can anyone tell me virajit buddy you're there pre-course survey can anyone tell me anyone virajit or just uh, it stuck in my mind that's all anyone can tell me have you come across a term called pre-course survey to know uh, what uh, we know that uh uh prerequisites of the course like basically what we know from the last semesters okay um, is it required for teacher as well yes, yes sir because uh, you will get to know how much we have understood and how much you you can uh, detail uh, for the lessons okay. absolutely absolutely it is not that you know i teach and you just take it right it is not like a kind of uh, uh, preaching over here okay this is a holistic education system right so in which student and teacher should go hand in hand so what i will do based on the topics given under homework i will conduct something known as pre-course survey how much to give marks that and all is the later part don't worry about it okay um so let me just uh, uh, list down the topics okay so diode fundamentals in short i will write okay so diode diode funda so in diode fundamentals uh, you are supposed to uh, be knowing the forward biasing mechanism uh, reverse biasing mechanism and then barrier potential then characteristics right what do you mean by characteristics the popular vi characteristics right so such things uh, you are supposed to know in uh, diodes um this is a b c b and then equivalent circuit that is very important equivalent circuit equivalent circuit so uh these are the things okay then in rectifiers Okay. In rectifiers, um, I want you to, you know, study um, the fundamentals of, again, in short, let me write, halfway rectifier. And what are the other two types that you had studied? Same thing. Right. Two-way rectifier. Can I say two-diode rectifier? And bridge rectifier, BR in short. It's a four diode rectifier, right? So half wave rectifier and full wave rectifier. And the two variants of full wave rectifiers are uh, two diode rectifier and four diode rectifiers. Okay. And transistor fundamentals. Transistor fundamentals. Okay. So this I'm just giving you a heads up. Okay, about a transistor fundamentals. Don't worry. For about one to one and a half week, say about ten days. Okay, ten days. For about say ten days. 
Okay, you can expect um, quiz questions based on this diode fundamentals. Okay, so after let's say second week, okay, from second week onwards, from second week onwards, um, probably you can uh, uh, expect uh, questions from transistor fundamentals. Okay, now please don't take it as a burden. Okay, and if you have any uh, feedback to give, um, you can give in the class group or you can even uh, ping me separately okay the whole idea is to make your learning uh, uh, you know enjoyable all right so you must know the fundamentals okay then only you will be able to appreciate the analog electronic course okay which is true for any other course uh, that you uh, take it okay fine so in transistor fundamentals you can expect what kind of prerequisite knowledge you are going to have. Okay, operation. Operation of PNP and NPN transistor. Okay, operation of PNP and NPN transistor. And then the important uh, factors, right? Alpha, beta, and gamma. They are basically current gains, but there are several, I mean, few differences between alpha, beta, and gamma. Okay. So operation of PNP and NPN. Okay. So operation as in you please concentrate on um, how the base current, how the base current, you know, um, give rise to the flow of collector and emitter current. Okay. So by connecting an external voltage to the base terminal of the transistor, you will be able to circulate base current. So that's the reason, you know, we say transistor is a current controlled device, CCD, current controlled device. Okay. So you have to look at um, the operation of PNP and NPN. Okay. So you may not, uh, you know, um, get any gate questions on the working of um, what you say, transistor, but it is always advantageous to know uh, the proper uh, understanding of uh, transistors. Okay, so alpha, beta, gamma, and then uh, biasing, have you come across? Can anyone confirm me? Biasing? Have you come across biasing? All right, biasing, uh, you don't worry. Okay. Uh, let me take it, make, let me teach it from the scratch. Let me take, teach biasing. So these are the things, okay. And in uh, FET, don't worry now, sometime later, you know, I will talk about uh, FETs, okay. So are we good till now? Okay. All right. So that's about the course prerequisites. Um, by taking the example of the course, what you have already studied, that is basic electronics. All right. Okay. Now what I will do, okay. you're able to see, right? If you are not able to see anything, uh, one of you can just voice out, okay? You're able to see the form, right? Okay, fine. Yes, sir. So now let's start with our uh, AC course. Okay. So this is the structure. Okay, I will just uh, go through with it. Okay. Now, before starting this AC course, um, I wanted to discuss about two important aspects of um, electronic field um, in, uh, you can say, um, countries or in fact, uh, globes uh, economy. All right. So what I've done is I've just uh, did a small survey. Okay in internet itself and I found uh, the impact of electronics okay now what I have taken is I have considered in order to understand the contribution of electronics um, in a country's economy I have considered two countries highly developed country such as USA and developing nations that is our own country okay now in USA you know 
um, as per the latest survey uh, conducted um, in the year 2020. That is, this is a very recent survey. It is found that um, the electronics amounts to 4% of US GDP. Okay, out of entire GDP, the contribution given by the electronic sector is about 4%, all right? And uh, it adds uh, close to 5.3 uh, million US jobs, okay? So you can see there is a tremendous boom in electronics uh, job market. And with that, you know, it contributes greatly to countries' uh, uh, you know, gross domestic uh, uh, yield also, okay, GDP, gross domestic uh, product. Okay, so that's about the developed country, okay, USA. Now, when I say contribution of electronics, this contribution um, can be considered right from um, device to the end product, end finished product. Device means bits and pieces of semiconductor devices and end product means uh, uh, the complete device which is constructed using those bits and pieces. Okay, so let's say several, uh, you know, uh, individual units of transistors, FETs, etc, etc. And the finished product uh, could be something like your CPU, right? The computer central processing unit, which is comprising of several uh, uh, transistors. So that's your finished product. Okay. So that's about you uh, know usa scenario if you look at uh, the indian scenario okay indian scenario it's a it's a uh, authentic uh, authenticated uh, information you can say okay so in india the scenario is like this in india electronics contributes to 2.5 percent of the total uh, gdp and uh, we are not even, I mean, even we are not uh, lagging behind in uh, exporting the electronic uh, goods also. Okay, so exports is uh, estimated at 8.8 .8 billion. Okay, majorly, um, you know, we can say the small components and small controlling circuits that is being manufactured in India. And the market itself is 120 billion us dollars okay 120 billion us dollars okay again the population uh, you have to consider okay sometimes what happens is that yeah to that matter if you consider uh, india's gdp is i think it is uh, fifth in the world india's gdp is fifth in the world we have recently surpassed uh, france so does it mean that we are fifth richest country in the world Can anyone tell me? India's GDP stands fifth in the world. Does it mean that? Uh, do we stand at fifth position in terms of uh, you know the richness or um, whatever? No, it doesn't mean that way. Okay. No. No. no right. Because we have to consider the population also. It's something like I have one billion US dollars. Okay, and let's say France is having just uh, uh, 50 million US dollars. Okay, now for 1 million US dollars uh, in India, you have uh, about 130 billion, uh, uh, you know, mouths to feed, correct? On the other hand, if you look at France, they, they, they may be having um, 50 uh, uh, million US dollars, but they will have a smaller population, okay? So what you get out of your entire GDP is very, very small in India. That's because of the population explosion. Okay. So though the GDP amount looks very high, that it doesn't talk about the prosperity of the nation. Okay. That is the second aspect. Okay. But the interesting point, what I want you to take from this uh, survey is that there is a tremendous scope for electronic engineers. Okay, when you say electronic engineers, it includes uh, communication engineers or uh, device level engineers or um, the application level uh, engineers. Okay, so you can see some, some of the emerging uh, fields in electronics, uh, 5G networks, Internet of Things, uh, uh, and even uh, what you say, 
um, the controller circuits which you are going to use in electric vehicles etc etc so in years to come um, it is expected that electronic job market is going to evolve uh, year on year basis okay so in fact uh, many of our uh, um, alumni have uh, taken up higher education in uh, electronic uh, fields electronic fields okay when you say electronic fields um, the possible you know higher education uh, avenues could be um, the device level higher education that is vlsi sector or the application level uh, uh, electronic uh, field uh, which is nothing but your power electronic side okay so that's the uh, you know uh, higher education trend what i could uh, uh, device okay fine that is only one source of information i would request you to you know browse um, over the internet to know about more uh, what you say um, opportunities for electronics okay fine so having uh, told about the role of electronics in uh, country's economy uh, probably we can uh, dig deep into the um, course uh, description okay fine so this needs to be changed 2021 so sorry let me do it live all right so course code is 18e34 and semester exam is 60 marks and internal assessment is 40 marks okay um, so this 40 marks is divided as 30 plus 10 30 going to be the internal assessment marks and uh, 10 uh, is given on the basis of uh, quiz uh, assignment etc etc all right so this you have to be very careful the semester and exam you are expected to write um, this year uh, pen and paper exam okay so please be ready for it okay Fine. so syllabus is divided into five modules module one till module five okay so in module one in nutshell i'm telling you you will talk about the diode applications as well as uh, the biasing uh, fundamentals okay so you can see the syllabus diode circuits what is it diode clipping and clamping circuits that's all they haven't talked about um, the operation of pn junction diode neither they talked about the rectifiers etc etc okay that's what i was telling you now in order to understand clipping circuit you should have the understanding of rectifier circuit so that's the reason i made you to uh, you know note down those uh, uh, prerequisite points all right okay next we have transistor biasing and stabilization okay um, which talks about operating point etc etc don't uh, worry about it we'll uh, talk about it once we uh, come across this particular topic okay module 2 is transistor at uh, low frequencies okay now one important point what i want you to look at is the taxonomy levels okay so taxonomy levels which is you know proposed by an educator called bloom okay so that's the reason it is called as bloom's taxonomy okay um, you are aware of bloom's taxonomy if yes please let me know because i don't want to kill the time are you aware of bloom's taxonomy okay fine so in module 1 the kind of questions uh, that you may get in your exam could be falling under understanding level or applying level or analyzing level okay now what do you mean by understanding level okay in order to instead of giving you the textbook definition of understanding level um, probably i can uh, tell you a question okay um, say for example um, draw the output waveform of a bridge rectifier circuit if my question is something like draw or plot the output waveform of a bridge rectifier circuit then you can say that um, the question uh, comes under understanding level okay so understanding level 
is a second level of uh, bloom's taxonomy okay so in order to plot the waveform what is that you know you should know you should know the working of the circuit you should know um, how the circuit uh, operates in positive half cycle and negative cycle of, i mean half cycle of the input etc so you are expected to know something in order to plot uh, the output waveform okay so that is your understanding level question applying level could be something like uh, yeah um find the equivalent resistance of the complicated network given below okay so that is kind of applying okay because in order to find the equivalent uh, equivalent circuit what is that you are going to do you are going to use uh, the available reduction technique from um, you know set of uh, uh, techniques right you will have several techniques in electrical engineering in which you will choose a particular technique say for example series parallel reduction of resistances and you will apply that technique to you know simplify uh, the network further to get a single resistance okay that is kind of applying uh, this one okay the third uh, kind of question that you can expect in analyze category is something like uh, um you will be given with the waveform okay for the given waveform construct the circuit okay so you will be given with only the waveform so what you have to do is you have to look at the waveform you have to inspect its positive half cycle negative half cycle and then you know appropriate conclusion you have to draw and from your appropriate conclusion you know you will be able to rig up the circuit so it involves um, you know several uh, other aspects of learning that is you need to understand you need to apply certain uh, network theorems such as kvl kcl uh, node analysis mesh analysis okay so and finally you will be able to uh, build the circuit so which is considered as uh, uh, you know highest level of learning out of l2 l3 and uh, l4 okay fine so module 2 you can see that highest level of learning is analyzing in module 3 again you have you have analyzing module 4 you have analyzing and module 5 again you will find the highest level of learning as analyzing so why am i stressing on this analyze part okay i am stressing on analyze part is to reveal that the course is kind of analysis based uh, course okay so it is not a kind of explained basis course in the sense you will not get you know a majority of the questions uh, something like explain the forward bias characteristics of a diode or explain the working of oscillators or explain the working of an amplifier circuit no you may not get uh, uh, such questions over here yeah you may get but the probable of uh, you know um, um, occurrence of those questions uh, you can say as low as 20% and rest 80% of the questions are basically based on applying level and analyzing level okay so analog electronic circuits is a kind of analysis based subject okay so i would be needing your undivided attention in order to you know accomplish uh, this uh, course okay so i want you to you know learn this particular course with interest okay with without interest you will not like uh, the learning okay anything you consider so with interest if you study this particular course you know i can guarantee you that um, your learning becomes so very very enjoyable okay and you will appreciate uh, the higher semester courses as well okay now let's say you have taken up uh, my what do you say um, suggestions uh, seriously then uh, i can uh, proceed to the second part of the course description that is course outcomes so course outcomes are nothing but measurable parameters of the course in the sense after you know successfully completing analog electronic course the student can do the following after completing 
successfully i'm putting the word successfully okay that means to say with proper preparation if you complete this course at the end of the course you can do all the followings that means to say by knowing analog electronic cores you can explain the operation of various solid state devices and circuits that means to say you can explain any you know uh, person uh, the operation of uh, diode the operation of transistor and you can also uh, tell them the characteristics of diode etc etc okay so that is your first course outcome so this course outcome co1 will be measured by setting up questions in the internal assessment test okay so based on you know your um, attempt in the internal assessment test um, certain uh, uh, weightage will be given to this particular course outcome okay and you are also expected to apply the knowledge of network theorems to determine bias point details okay so this bias point details is nothing but the operating point or the q point okay so network theorems when you say network theorems it could be thevenin's theorem or it could be mesh analysis nodal analysis kvl kcl etc etc okay and you can also design uh, some uh, simple analog electronic circuits such as uh, rectifier circuits or uh, amplifier circuits okay that is also possible um, if you successfully complete this particular course okay and you will be able to analyze certain parameters of amplifier circuits such as input impedance output impedance voltage gain current gain etc etc okay and finally co5 now are you with me or did i lose you in between no right no sir no sir, no, sir. okay okay fine fine now co5 it is going to be a uh, little interesting okay it is not from the syllabus but i want to put some extra efforts to teach you an uh, appropriate modern tool okay so modern tool what i am going to consider over here is p spice okay so p p spice okay let me type it uh, kind of tongue twister it is p spice yeah so this is the tool name p spice i have downloaded and i can pass it uh, pass it to you okay in in about a week or two okay now why do we need this uh, p spice okay now um this lab i mean this course is attached to lab as well you have a lab called electronics laboratory wherein you will be performing experiments based on analog electronic circuits as well as digital electronic circuits okay now due to this uh, pandemic uh, crisis uh, you know that you are not able to perform the experiment physically is that right so what is happening is um, we conduct the experiments and we send the videos okay i don't know to what extent you will see the videos also so it is something something like uh, you know uh, enabling uh, the virtual laboratory so this p spice tool um, enables uh, the virtual laboratory concept okay so having known this p spice tool uh, sitting at home um, you will be able to see uh, what kind of output uh, uh, inverting amplifier gives or what kind of output uh, non inverting amplifier gives or you can also uh, check uh, um, the output of uh, rectifier circuits um, you know two diode four diode anything you want to call you can even solve electronic circuits for example let us say i have given you a transistor circuit and let's say i have asked you to calculate collector current base current and emitter current of that particular transistor circuit so what you do using classical approach that is using pen and calculator you will apply kvl to input circuit output circuit and you will calculate collector current base current emitter current etc etc let's say that particular problem is not found in the textbook and how do you uh, say that um, the obtained solution is the right solution whom you will ask you will have to ask your classmates right if consistently um, 
everyone are getting the same answer then you can say the question is i mean the um, you know solution uh, approach is correct okay but that is uh, time consuming because you are depending you are dependent on someone else's capability of uh, solving that particular problem however if you know this particular piece by tool you don't have to depend on anyone you solve the circuit on your own you get your answers and rig up the same circuit in the simulation tool and run the simulation tool so simulation tool will give you the values of collector current base current emitter current etc etc so you can compare um the computer results with your uh, handheld handheld calculation results and based on you know the, the comparison of two results um you can judge whether your approach is right or wrong if let's say your approach is right then probably you can take up a more complex problem if let's say your approach is approach is uh, you know ha your approach has led you to uh, getting uh, uh, incorrect answers what you can do you can do reverse engineering okay you can try out with the uh, you know other technique to get the solution so this is the whole idea of teaching an extra course outcome which is beyond the scope of your syllabus okay now if you look at the course outcome 5 okay what is it apply an appropriate modern tool to solve electronic circuits so you will be able to apply this particular tool in future semesters also so that's the reason this is co5 okay i have mapped to po12 what is po12 program outcome so it is the skill that a graduate should have upon graduation okay so program outcome 12 says that the graduate should have um, the lifelong learning skills in the sense what you study is not limited to uh, a particular course or particular uh, academic year or you know uh, four years he will be he should be able to apply it in the you know future as well so if you know pspice you can uh, tackle um, network analysis of course you can tackle um, linear integrated circuit course in fourth semester you can also tackle power electronic circuit course in fifth semester so this is the advantage so in every semester you will be able to uh, apply this particular tool to one or the other subject so on that note i can say that um, your co5 contributes in lifelong learning okay. now are you clear about my uh, intention behind uh, introducing this course outcome or if you have any doubts you can let me know is it clear yes sir okay fine so what i want is that you know let's say i put my effort and in the end you don't turn up you don't take participate in any of the uh, simulation uh, exercises that i'm going to you know uh, carry in this particular semester then the entire objective is lost it's something like um, teacher is struggling and only few students are responding and others are not at all taking part of it then the entire uh, objective uh, fails okay i don't want uh, that type of uh, teaching also so my sincere request is uh, that you know i want you to take part in this particular course okay whatever you know differences or apprehensions you have had in the previous semester i would say just you know chuck it and just come as a you know come to third semester with a fresh set of uh, mindset okay so don't worry um, the subject is challenging provided you know you practice it okay all right so this is uh, what i wanted to talk about the course description okay so in the next class uh, i can talk about you know some other aspects of the course all right so this being the first class i am not going to take any quiz but tomorrow i uh, will start taking the quiz uh, on diode fundamentals okay so be prepared for um, the diode fundamentals uh, quiz that i am going to uh, take tomorrow okay if you have any doubts um, let's discuss in the previous class all right
Thank you. Thank you, sir. So I'll end the session.